I'm on. Well, testing one, two, three. Good morning, guys. Hope everyone's having a great morning on this glorious, sunshiny day today. Much love, much respect to all my new subscribers. All the comments that I'm reading, I read them every day. They're so inspiring. Keep the comments coming in, guys. Thank you very much indeed. Um, give me a little bit of direction, if you can, of um, what you want me to talk about, guys. Um, because, you know, <clears throat> I, can, I can get a little bit boring going on about stories. But today I want to talk to you about one um, funny story. It's not, so it's not all doom and gloom. I want to talk to you about one, one funny story um, when I was living in Enfield um, with my ex-missus and my kids. Basically, I had a three-bedroom house, um, a massive front garden and a back garden. And um, on the sides of the house, I built a garage. So you could drive straight straight through to the front garden, out to the back. Um, and I was cutting vans and transits up out the back. Um, I'm not too sure if I've told you this story on my channel yet about the um, the scanner. I think I did, yeah. Um, when I heard my name and my address coming over the scanner, I quickly um, had to get, get the van on the back of the truck and get it, get it away. Um, five minutes late, they come and raided me out. So them scanners did work. But yeah, that's one story. Another story I want to talk to you about is my um, my goat. So I bought a goat from a traveller, uh, one of the Gumballs, and that's what I used to go and work with in, in Enfield. Um, I was working with the Gumballs, um, the Smiths, uh, the Does. Um, there's quite a few, and I used to go up, up onto um, Harlow site, um, and we used to go out. We used to go out in the four by fours, going across fields. Um, lamping and doing killing pheasants and game and going back to the site and all going around the campfire and cooking a bit of grub and having a beer. It was, it was a really, really good time. Anyway, one afternoon, um, <coughs> Teddy Gumble, he was getting rid of a goat um, and she was only a baby. I think she was probably about six months old. So because I've always liked animals, I said to Teddy, Teddy um, I'll take the goat. And he said, yeah, he said, as long as you give it a good home, he said, you can have it. So that was it. I loaded um, the goat up onto my truck. I had a transit tipper truck at the time and I put her on the back. Um, and my house was probably around about five miles away. Um, but the goat had been used to uh, transport anyway. So yeah, I got, uh, got the goat up, got the goat home and um, I called her Auntie May. So uh, her full name was Mabel, <coughs> but we called her Auntie May. And I had her out the back garden. Um, my back garden was probably... I don't know, probably 500 yards long, um, 20 yards wide. I had geese, chickens. Um, I had all sorts of livestock in the back garden because I've always liked livestock. I've always liked animals. So anyway, I had to go through a few years and she used to come into the... Um, actually, I should show a photo. Um, the photos are in my photo album. and I should have got a photo out before I started this video to upload um, a photo. Just one minute, guys. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to get you the photo. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah, I just dug the photo out of Auntie Mabel. So I'll turn the camera around and show you Auntie May for a minute. That's Auntie May. And she wouldn't drink nothing else apart from out of the kitchen tap. So I put a horse trough out of the back garden. I had a hose out of the back garden. There was buckets of water out the back garden, but May wouldn't um, drink out of the back garden, so I had to bring her in the kitchen. That's how tame she was. Um, and we used, to, we used to eat dinner with her. She was part of the family. That's Auntie May, look. Sadly miss her. Oh yeah, I thought I'd drop that little, little story of Auntie May, but what happened was, was one afternoon, I took Auntie May out for um, a spin on my truck, in, on the back of my truck. Um, I was actually going to take her to a field, uh, which was just around the corner from me, to do a bit of grazing. Um, because a few of the boys off the site used to put their horses on the field. Um, it was a council field and they didn't mind. Um, so yeah, I was taking her around there and I thought I'd give my mate Nutty Norman a knock. Um, Nutty Norman was my mate from Enfield Lock in North London. And I met him through banger racing. And we'd done so many things together. Um, you know, I got locked up while I was with him for something and he, he used to come up every single fortnight he used to make sure my missus was, was all right. He was giving her money. Um, and whilst I was out with him, we had a, um, a car front. So we was buying cars um, cheap out of um, Chingford car auctions. 
and um, I pulled, we pulled onto a, an old petrol forecourt, um, a derelict petrol forecourt, and we had all the cars lined up and we were buying and selling cars. I had a caravan put on there, and I had um, one of my mates, what was his name again? Um, we put him in the trailer as security and he used to stay there overnight. Um, Ronnie, that was his name, Ronnie, Fat Ronnie, yeah. So we put Fat Ronnie in the caravan, I put, um, I give him a high-vis jacket and I put security on his jacket and, you know, he was homeless so he absolutely really appreciated it and he loved it. Um, he, he was a bit, he used to like a drink, you know, so I used to make sure he was all right and he wasn't rattling or nothing like that. But yeah, he, uh, he, was, he was absolutely fucking awesome. So this one afternoon, <clears throat> I thought I'd take, I'll go back to the story, I thought I'd take Auntie May out for a spin, put her on the back of the truck, went around to Nutty Norman's house, he lived on Carter Hatch Lane, which is just around the corner from me, and um, I knocked on knocked on his door. He lived on the fourth uh, floor up in a set of flats. So I went up, went up. there was no lift, so I went up the stairs, went up there, knocked on his door, bang, 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 calling through his letterbox, no man, no man, he weren't in. So I thought, right, I'm going to have a right laugh here. So what I've done is I, I walked all the way back down the stairs, I took Auntie May off the back of my truck, and then I walked Auntie May all the way up the fourth, step, fourth uh, floor, up to the set of flats, up in the set of flats, sorry, and um, I tied Auntie May around Nutty Norman's door knocker and left her there. Um, I only went around the corner to get a drink out of the shop, which was only about half a mile away, and Auntie May was safe outside my mate's house um, because opposite him, uh, we had another mate and we used to look out for each other, so everyone in the flats was sweeties and that. So anyway, I've gone around the shop, gone to get a can of Coke, and all of a sudden my phone's rang, and it was Norman. I said, hello, mate. I, hello, mate. I said, how are you doing? He said, you cunt. He said, you're fucking, you're, you're, he said, is this your goat? Is this your goat? I said, what goat? What goat? He said, that's your goat. It's, it's May. You put May outside my doorstep and she shit all over the place. Anyway, I couldn't stop laughing. I really couldn't. I said, I've only done it for a laugh, Norman. And I've, so I've left the shop. I've gone back round his house. I've knocked on his door. And he had actually taken Auntie May through his front door and put Auntie May on the balcony, full, full, full floor up on the balcony. And as I, as I walked up the stairs, his doorstep was absolutely full of shit, um, goat shit. It was all over the place. It fucking stunk the flats down. But we was we was stoners. We like a puff, and I went in there, and I see Auntie May out on the balcony, like ma ma. Out on it is funny as fuck. It really was. Um, and everyone in the flats come out, like because we knew everyone in the flats. They all come out, and we was having a laugh and a joke, and uh, it was it was classical. But um, I thought I'd drop you that little story about Auntie May and um, what I'd done to Nutty Norman. But we laughed about it afterwards. Uh, obviously after. Like, I put Auntie May back on the back of my truck and I drove her back home and put her back in my back garden. But I used to take her out for walks. Um, so if I was taking the kids out to a park or something, I'd always take Auntie May. Um, I'd put her on the back of the truck and let the kids run around the field, around the park. They had quads, motorbikes at the time. And, um, yeah, I used to I used to walk Auntie May on, on a bit of, well, not even on a bit of rope. Sometimes I should tie her up around the fence, but most of the time I used to let her walk across the fields. Um, so I thought I'd just drop that little, one little story to you guys because it is a funny story and, you know, I've got many, many, many more stories like that. Um, so what, anyway, where I'm at today is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I am doing my second book, um, making progress of it. I've, I've put, put about another 10,000 words in over the last few days, um, but it's, it's got to be a good book, you know what I mean? Um, it's got to have some funny stories in it, some horrible stories horror stories and you know it's going to end in it's going to end in on a good note because it's going to bring you right up to date of um, what happened since i got out of jail and since i got clean and got my life back together and got settled down so that's the last 12 years so i've got another 12 years worth of stories to put into the book um and then it'll be finished guys but yeah i hope everyone's having a glorious day today whatever you're doing Please stay safe. COVID is still about, so don't like let your reins down, you know. Um, and whatever you're doing, have a good day. Please don't forget to share and subscribe to keep my channel alive. Much love to all you guys out there. Peace.